Hey, my name is Fernando, and I'm a technical marketing manager here at GitLab. And today I'm going to go over some of the security features released in version 13.10. All right, let's get started. So the first feature I want to go over is the vulnerability bulk status updates. So now we can update a whole set of vulnerabilities within the vulnerability report. So let's take a look at that. So here I have my project. I go to security and compliance and vulnerability report. And now you see that there's this little clickable radio box and I can go ahead and change the status of all the vulnerabilities that I see fit to one complete status. So I can set these all to dismiss. Let's say I don't need to worry about them anymore. And now we have a bunch of vulnerabilities dismissed in a batch. And we can see that here. This makes it a lot easier for the security team or AppSec engineers to go ahead and, and just dismiss a whole bunch of vulnerabilities that, that need to be dismissed or go ahead and approve everything all at once if there's multiple of the same vulnerability caught or there's similar vulnerabilities that can be grouped together. Next thing we're gonna look at is the clickable file and line numbers uh, links in the vulnerability reports. So you can see that some of the some of the items in the vulnerability report now have a link directing you to where the vulnerability was found. So either the line of code or the actual file, depending on the file type. So here you can see that there's one for possible binding of all interfaces that was dismissed. I can click on that and it'll take me straight to the file number where here I can see that, that there's an issue because I'm setting debug to true. That's another feature that makes it easy to go ahead and, and go through code and be able to debug and find where the vulnerability is located at, at just an instance without having to deep uh, dive into an issue. Then uh, there's gonna be these new icons added to the vulnerability trends chart or what's known as the security dashboard. So going to the security dashboard, so it gives us a, a list of the vulnerabilities that were added or that were resolved within a given time frame. So now you can see that here, we can go through it and we can actually sort through the different times and get the actual times that we want. So before this was just a 365 day view, but now we can actually sort through it and see exactly the point that we want. And then there's also a couple items that we can actually use to select the area that we want to. So we can go ahead and select all of this. We can zoom in, uh, we can go back to our history and we can even download an image of it. So you can see that there was an SVG image downloaded. Uh, next, let's jump into the container scanning engine. So before we were using Claire and CLAR as our container scanning um, engines. And now we're going ahead and moving to Trivi. So uh, just an example, Trivi, uh, we've seen it to catch more vulnerabilities for our container scans. And this will, I'll just show you the output. So if I go here to container scans, you can see that there's a different output and this is running on Trivi. So it's showing us all the all the vulnerabilities found for container scanning. And in order to get this to work, what we all we have to do is within the GitLab CI YAML file, we go ahead and we add this CI major version and we set that to four. And last thing I wanted to show you was the graphical interface for configuring API fuzzing. So if we go to security and compliance and we go to configuration, there's going to be a little thing here for API fuzzing. And you can see that under the manage table, we'll see enable. And here we can provide the target URL. We can provide the scan mode. Um, so if we have open API, Postman or HAR, and we can enable authentication if we need to, to provide a username and password for basic authentication. And we can set a profile. So what this does is it automatically creates 
these variables within the CI YAML. So let me go ahead and show you. So if you see these variables right here, there's Fuzz API profile, which I selected the long 100, tells us what type of uh, fuzzing to run. Uh, I select the open API file here, and I select the target URL, and all of this can be built from that configuration file. So there you have it. Some of the security features released in 13.10. Be sure to subscribe and follow for more content like this. Thanks.